Hello! Well, this sofa review gig finally seems to be paying off, as somebody has sent me a free Apple iPad to review. I didn't have to pay or nothing. It's fantastic. If anybody else wants to send me things to review, like, I don't know, Porsches or diamond-encrusted aircraft carriers, I'll let you know my P.O. Box address. Anyway, yeah, Apple iPad. Uh, today is the UK release date of said item. I've had mine about a week. It's an American one, obviously, because they only came out today in the UK. Weren't you listening to me three seconds ago? Um, yeah, the surprising thing, actually, is it took ages to arrive because for reasons we have no understanding of, the postal company, instead of sending it from America to the UK, which, you know, would make quite a lot of sense, sent it from America to Canada, where it stayed for a fortnight, then sent it back to America, then sent it to the UK. It seems fairly inefficient to me, but uh, what do I know? I don't run a postal company. <sighs> right, anyway, let's have a look at the device. Or not, because I'm going to show you the box first. Yeah, I know. Don't worry, there's not much in it. We'll get it out of the way quickly. Here's a box. It's from Apple, so it's quite sleek and nice and has virtually nothing in it. Uh, yes, yeah, so designed by Apple in California. little thing with your bits of paper. And, you know, I don't even know what's in it. I haven't looked. No discs or anything. What's in there? Very basic statement of uh, how to use the controls on it. And some sort of warranty card. Lovely. Right, what's inside? Very, very little, um, as is the status of Apple products generally. You have a USB lead and a power adapter, which is of course no use to me at all because it's an American one. Something you should bear in mind actually if you do happen to be importing one is that uh, it won't charge off a standard USB socket. The quite big battery in it takes an awful lot of juice and as a result you just sort of plug it into your Mac or PC and the iPad says rather petulantly, not charging, not going to do it. So uh, your best bet is obviously proper USB adapter. The one that comes with the iPhone 3G does work because I've been using it, but a word of warning, it gets bloody hot, really bloody hot. Anyway, enough of boring boxes, let's have a look at the sleek device. Ooh. You can see my face in it. I apologise for that, but it's very shiny. Right, quick look round the back, which isn't particularly interesting. There we are. There's a shiny Apple logo. It says iPad 16 gigabyte. This is the non-3G version, so it can only collect to your local Wi-Fi. And there's some copyright gubbins and some interesting logos. Marvellous. OK, let's go on to the device itself. At the bottom, you've got speakers and somewhere to plug it into its uh, proprietary connector thing bit of volume, a lock, that's not actually uh, the old iPhone switch for volume on and off, that will lock the um, perspective of the screen, which is actually very useful, because when you're using your iPhone, you have to quite sort of violently turn it, don't you, in order to uh, change your orientation, whereas with this, possibly because it's so much larger, you kind of uh, do it quite a lot by accident, so that is an immensely useful little thing. On the top, you've got a power button, you've got that, which is a hole. I don't know what that's for, actually. I would have said SIM card release, but uh, of course this is the non-3G, so it doesn't have the slot. And a little something there for your headphones. Nothing on this side. And yeah, here is the device itself. Something I noticed uh, when we first had shots of it was there's a big, ugly black bezel round it. You think, that's not very posh, is it? Apple like their things look pretty. Why has it got a big bezel? Then you hold it in your hands and you realise the reason it has a big bezel is, if not, you'd be constantly touching the screen and it wouldn't be any use. So uh, mark me down minus one for common sense there. Also, while we're on the subject of the device itself, the ergonomics aren't quite as good as I'd expected. It sort of feels a bit, I don't know, um, not that comfortable is probably quite a fair description. Uh, maybe to do with a minimalist design. It's a bit sort of spiky in the corners. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want sort of huge rubber lumps to hold on to or something, but... I don't know, it's not that great. And the weight of it, uh, a lot of people have described this as a problem. I got mine out of the box and thought, this doesn't weigh anything, you wimps. What's the matter with you? You've got arms like noodles, haven't you? Then, of course, you start holding it for a while. <clears throat> and, you know, it becomes heavier over time, doesn't it? And it does start to do your hands in a bit, and that's when the ergonomics start to sort of chafe a bit as well. You really wouldn't want to use it for a huge period of time without resting it on something. So bear that in mind if for some reason you were planning on buying one and never resting it on anything ever. Right, anyway, let's turn it on and have a proper look. You'll notice it says slide to unlock and gives us the time and everything just like an iPhone. And there's the time. If you want to keep an eye on that, you can see when I'm using jump cuts. Right, slide to unlock. 
Oh yes, that's mighty familiar to anyone who's used an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Of course, this is very, very similar to an iPod Touch in use and in many other ways, as you will probably see as we go along. Right, status bar at the top. Tells us it's an iPad. Always handy. Except when I stick my finger in the way. Let's try that again. Tells us it's an iPad. OK, we're connected via wireless. And there's no other way to connect this particular one, so it's easy. It's a quarter past three. Oh no, that means the school children are going to be walking past soon and making loads of noise. Oh well. Uh, battery's at 42%. There's a lot of talk about the battery life being excellent, and it certainly is. I'm getting about nine, nine and a half hours out of it, which is astonishing when you especially take into account the awful battery of the iPhone. I wasn't really expecting much from that, but no, this is splendid. OK, let's have a look through the first row of apps, which aren't going to be very interesting. Let's get it over with. Calendar. It now looks like a little book. That'll do. Contacts. It now looks like a little book. That'll do. Notes. Looks exactly the same as it did, really. Not much to say on that one. But we can use it as an example for using the keyboard. Hooray. New note. Go on. Let us type. Now the keyboard itself um, looks remarkably similar to the old iPhone one yet again, however, is a lot, lot nicer to use purely because it's bigger. You can kind of touch type on it, but not for long of course, because there's zero tactile feedback. You're literally touching a bit of glass, aren't you? So as a result, you tend to sort of slide to one side and not notice, and then you've written everything in code. But there we are. Let's write a note. Uh. That's not a good joke. I apologise. Right, out we go, and in we go next to photos. Hooray! I haven't bothered putting any on. I'm sure you know what a photo looks like. And my word, they do look nice on this screen. Maps. Here's a map of Reading Road in Oxfordshire. Where on earth is this? My girlfriend's been using this. I've got no idea what that relates to at all. Anyway, yeah, nice Maps app. Of limited use, because of course there's no GPS. Hmm, I'm probably she's cheating on me in a man with Reading Road now. Hmm, I'll just have to look into that later. But in the meantime, I shall look into this person's tennis court. Fun. OK, that's the first boring line of apps gone. Let's look at some of the more interesting ones. In fact, let's nip down to the main ones at the bottom. You'll notice this is larger. I believe, actually, you can now pop more icons onto it. There, I was correct. OK, first things first, let's look at what is basically the killer app of it, looking on the internet. Oh, incidentally, something you may have noticed, it's a little bit more responsive than even the iPhone 3GS. Everything's a little bit smoother and nicer. In fact, if I turn it round, whoop, I don't know if you're used to sort of iPhones and that, but that's much smoother and nicer than they do it. It's got a bit of oomph behind it, this thing, which is uh, fairly impressive when you take into account the battery. OK, let's Google something. Something I'm not going to get done for copyright for showing you. I shall Google myself and my own site. There we are. Now, looking at the web in portrait mode isn't much fun, to be brutally honest, because the fonts get a bit small and indistinct. You're far better off Whoop, twiddling it round this way. In fact, I'm going to put the lock on. There we are. Now, using the internet on this is a bloody joy. It really is. Very, very easy to scroll about and look. Everything looks vibrant and lovely. How I said the word vibrant enough in relation to the screen? You can't say the word vibrant enough in relation to the screen. Really, it's really nice. Um, yeah, you can look at the internet on it, but my word, my word, it is quick and easy. Um, if you're sort of sitting on the sofa and just want to look something up quickly, this is absolutely unparalleled. Particularly, of course, because it doesn't take two seconds to turn it on. Button. Slide to unlock. We're in. Imagine how long it takes to fire up any sort of laptop and do that. Right. Uh, something else is, of course, Flash. Yes, Adobe's proprietary Flash format, basically a standard on the web for animations and many types of video. The iPod doesn't do it at all, ever. So, it kind of has workarounds. Something I quite like, well, something really important, come to think of it, is embedded YouTube videos do just play. Hello. Shut up. I don't like your face. Yeah, which is good. You know, you don't have to load up that proprietary YouTube app and get it all to load and do rubbish things like that. Let's look at another site uh, that I run. Trailer. 
club. 70. There we go. And up it loads. Ooh, big somebody's mouth. That's always nice. Yeah, as you can see, works a bloody treat. What more could you ask for? Well, quite a bit, I suppose. Um, the first, well, first and only real problem I find with it is that sometimes it renders the fonts a bit small and you have to do the mighty zoom in. Now, that's not much of a problem, but when you put it into a perspective with how incredibly immediate and easy this is, even zooming in slightly seems like a chore. You probably wouldn't think anything of it on a laptop or something, but uh, that is a slight drawback of the relatively restrained uh, resolution of the screen. Anyway, I'm sure you've all seen the internet in your lives. I shall just point out again, it's very nice to look at it on an iPad. Also, I shouldn't look at sites with black backgrounds because it makes the reflections worse. Anyway, what's next? Videos! Here we are. Now, videos, there's been a lot of, uh, hmm, I'm going to put it, nay saying, shall we say, about videos for the simple reason that the screen isn't high def enough to show high def, which has upset a lot of peeps. Um, I, do, I don't really find it that much of a problem because the screen is so bright and nice that videos still look great on it. But, you know, I suppose you do have to take into account that the resolution is limited. And, of course, since most of what you're going to be watching on it is widescreen, and this is, in fact, in 4x3, you're reducing the resolution again with bloody great black bars at the top and bottom. But such is life. It still looks good. And, you know, how high def do you need something you're holding fairly close to your face? I don't know. Right, here's a short video of made for your delectation to show off the video capabilities. It's based on the old Godfrey Ho ninja movies, which were awful. Ready? Here we go. Play. Why did you steal the ultimate golden terminating ninja warrior dragon? Hey! Fortunate number for one such as you. And that's the future star of my dog, Oscar. Uh, hmm, oh, did the shaky cam on that a bit in retrospect. Anyway, that was something good to do while we were redecorating the outhouse. Okay, that's movies. Put them on there, watch them, get them off. Put them on there. Oh dear. That's something we haven't mentioned. Right, you may have heard that. Uh, much like the iPhone, the iPad is a fairly locked-down system. Uh, in lockdown doesn't come to half of it, really. It's more been sort of locked in a huge metal case, buried 400 feet under the earth and covered with concrete mixed with Steve Jobs' piss. I mean, you can't get anything on it or off easily. Video's particularly bad because you have to convert them to a specific format first and it's really irritating. Um, if, I mean, this would be a brilliant thing for me to take to meetings, because I can wander in and say, look at this video I've done, well, here it is. In fact, I'd have to spend bloody ages before every meeting converting everything and getting it on it. Oh dear, we'll come back to that in a bit anyway. Let's look at some mail. I've set up a special fake email account especially. And it's actually showing my real one. That's incredibly annoying. OK, I will blur all that out, because I don't want you seeing my private emails. You'll have all my porn passwords. Right, here's a fake one I've set up called iPadReview at AOL.com. Don't bother emailing it, because it will be turned off by the time you get hold of this. OK, there's two in the inbox, apparently. Here we are. And very nice it is too. Basically, you have a list up the side, as you probably noticed, of your emails. And you can then scroll up and read and reply as you see fit. There's a nice welcome one from AOL Mail. And some stupid thing I sent myself just to check it was working. Of course, if you turn it portrait, it's now much better for just reading email. If you are responding, though, I would strongly recommend going back to landscape for the simple reason. You get a much bigger... How do I get it up? Keyboard, and it's therefore easier to type on. Easy. Right, let's have a look at YouTube, like you're doing right now. In fact, maybe you're looking at it on an iPad, creating a sort of weird tunnel mirror effect. OK, this is a very, very nice app. Uh, it's far, far more responsive than actually using the YouTube site on any computer I've ever seen. Also, the few extra features they've added, like being able to look at your subscriptions, well, not signed in, which isn't going to help that, but um, makes it a whole lot better to use and more functional. 
Let's bring something up. Um, I think it's somebody who won't sue me. Uh, I met Brett Domino the other day. He was a nice bloke. I don't think he's going to break my kneecaps for uh, showing a few seconds of his video. Uh, let's have... Oh my goodness. He had a key tile when I met him, but this one looks massive. Oh, look at that. It's the 80s all over again, man. Better stop that there in case the music copyrighted, actually. Oh, you know, I kind of want a guitar now, but I've got no musical ability at all, so let's forget that. Yeah, anyway, it's bloody brilliant. Re it's the best way of looking at YouTube I have ever seen, by far. So that's nice. iPod. I think it's a bit of a misnomer to call this function iPod, because an iPod's a small device you carry with you, and, you know, you ain't going to be carrying this in your pocket. Unless you've got some weird jacket with a huge front pocket you can fit it in, where it'll be like an armour plate. Okay. There's one piece of music on it. I'm not playing it properly. <laughs> that would probably be the album cover if there was one. You get the idea, it plays music. Probably handy on a train to drown out whatever racist idiot is sitting next to you if it's anything like the last time I went on the train. Okay, iTunes! That's where we like to spend our money. Hmm, taking long to come up the usual. There we go. Yes, you can look and pay money to own pieces of music that you can play later. I'm sure you're not unfamiliar with this concept. The Music Glee. That doesn't sound good. Beachcomber's Window by Stornoway. Never heard of them. Mind you, I've never heard of anything, because basically uh, my cultural references stopped in 1994. Uh, something I was doing, actually. I wanted to see how much it is to uh, download and watch Inglorious Bastards, the... Uh, Quentin Tarantino film with the bad spelling because I haven't watched it yet it's one of those things with very mixed reviews as in some people loved it and some people didn't I want to make up my own mind it appears to be 11 bloody pounds are you taking the mick? I didn't think they were that expensive I can get the DVD for about 6 or 7 Ooh. now let's put me off iTunes I'm sure you know what it is Humph. now the app store this is now sort of broken in two. You have the iPhone bit and the iPad bit, because of course all iPhone apps will work on the iPad, except uh, ones, you know, that use the microphone, if you haven't got an external one, or ones that use the GPS, or this, that, and the other. Right, what's featured? What's big in the world of iPad today? The Times, something to do with Stephen Fry, a magic piano, that's the best type of piano. Ooh, Broken Sword Director's Cut. I keep meaning to look at this. Paris in the Fall, a brutal murder at the Palais Royale. Oh, I've never played Broken Sword. I do like the old point and clicks, though. Now, this has got to be a good use of the iPad, but unfortunately for you, I'm extremely mean and I'm not spending £5 on one game to show you. So, Yabu sucks. Something I was looking for, an eBay client for it. Unfortunately, there isn't one for the iPad as yet, just the older iPod one. So actually, something of interest, you will notice that some of these have a little plus next to them. Plus means it works on iPhone or iPad. You don't see it that often, though. Usually they'll sell a separate iPad version for more money. And there is a bit of a weakness of the old iPad, at the moment at least. The apps are a lot more expensive, whereas they're usually about 59p, or, you know, £1.19, as that one ably demonstrates there. The iPad ones are rather more. They tend to start at around £1.79 for the very minimal ones, and most of them around the £3 or more mark. And a lot of them don't seem to do that much more, particularly the games, which frequently fall into that old iPhone trap of, you know, here's a Flash game off the internet that you can play for free that we're now charging you to play on your Apple device. That always seems a bit naughty, that. Anyway, that's where you buy things. That's all the stuff at the bottom. Uh, in fact, we covered that a while ago. Oh no! I've gone into the weird black screen of death. Oh, we're alright. Settings. That changes the settings. Do you really want to see that? Well, tough, because I'm not going to show you. No, I tell a lie, actually. I'm going to show you one bit of the settings, because it's very important. The Wi-Fi there. You frequently have to go in and turn it off and then turn it on again because it just suddenly stops receiving data. That's something you may have heard about on the internet and yeah, it's bloody true. All too true. I've gone through two routers trying to get one that's more stable with it and uh, frankly, no, it don't work too well. You get about 
sometimes about five minutes, sometimes about 35 minutes before it cuts out, and you have to reset it. It will almost certainly happen at some point while we're doing this, I imagine. We shall see. Now a new one. When I first got this, uh, there wasn't an iBooks app in the UK, but it's now been released. If you're not familiar with the concept, they're like books, what you read on the screen, like... Winnie the Pooh is the one that comes free, mainly because it's very, very pretty. It has lots of pretty drawings and things. Do you know, I haven't actually held this in portrait for books. I don't think what happens. The obvious. Makes sense. You'll notice they've spent an awful lot of time making it look and feel like a real book, which is very nice. Less nice, of course, is... Uh, I can't imagine many people will actually want to sit down and read a whole bloody book off a licked screen. This is something where you really want, you know, that e-ink thing you get on Kindles and that. Uh, I know some people I've spoken to can read whole screens. I've, known, I've spoken to two people this week who've read whole novels off an iPhone screen. I think I'd be blind by now if I tried that. But um, there we are. Perhaps that's a personal preference thing. I mean, it's handy for the train, but I couldn't read a lot off a bright screen. But as you can see, it's very pretty. Screen's very vibrant. I may have mentioned that 900 times already. And, you know, it looks and feels a bit like a book, which is nice. You do have a very small font choice, though, which is a bit odd. Also very weak is that if you get one of the books from, I believe, old Project Gutenberg, Pride and Prejudice here, they're not formatted very well. If we nip back to the start... Look at that contents page. Beautiful, he lied. Um, I mean, that's something you can put up with because the books are free, but uh, maybe that kind of thing annoys you. Okay, that's all the basic apps. I'm going to go and get a drink. Mm -hmm.